What's up, everybody? Welcome to our Junior High Interactive Family Experience. My name is Pastor Ethan. Thanks so much for participating with the family today. Today is the first day of August. That means the junior high camp is only two weeks away. 14 more days until we get to hang out for four days straight. Two more weekends until we're making memories that will last a lifetime. Two more Saturdays until we split into teams and compete for epic tables filled with prizes. If you haven't registered yet, make sure you hit the link in the video description right below me. There's only one more week until registration closes, so make sure you get your form in this week before it's too late. It's only 20 bucks to register, and if you've got multiple siblings in junior high, it's only 40 bucks for all of you. So click the link below to register. We can't wait to see you at camp. All right, let me tell you what you can expect for today. In a moment, we're gonna fill out an online connection card. So parents, get your smartphones ready. We're gonna have some friendly family competition. We're heading into week three of a series about change. And then all throughout our teaching video today, we are gonna pause and have some great discussions. Now, I just wanna remind all of our parents watching this morning that you are the ones who will be leading those discussions today. And those discussion questions can be found and downloaded from an email I sent out yesterday. And you can also find them in our Junior High Facebook group. If you didn't get that email or if you haven't joined our Facebook group, make sure you let me know so we can add you to our mailing list and send you an invite. Why? Because it's the best way to do these interactive experiences. It's by leading those discussions with your student. In fact, it's the entire reason why we do this every week so that you can have a clearer window into the spiritual development of your student. And so you can create a space where you're helping them grow into everything God created them to be. So if you need to pause the video and go and download those discussion guides, please do so now. Well, we are about to get into our series, but before we do, we would love to hear from you. We want to stay connected to you and check in. And so we have something called a connection card where we can do that. The connection card is found right on the main page of the Lake Point app. And so we would love if you would take the next 60 seconds and fill out the card. It's basically like signing our guest book and letting us know you were here. So let's take the next 60 seconds and fill out the card together. Thanks for completing the connection card and signing our guest book. Now, every week here at Junior High, we have some friendly family competition and today is an exciting challenge because you get to pick it. Here we go. All right, competitors. Think back to all the challenges we've done here at Junior High. Toilet paper towers, dance battles, cooking competitions, trivia. Pick your favorite challenge and have a rematch with the family. Let's see if you can either steal the title or remain champion of your favorite challenge. All right, how'd you do? Did you win? If you would let me know by taking the next two minutes to post a photo in our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group, you will have a chance to win a Tim Hortons gift card. Or if you don't have Facebook, you can just email me at ethan at lakepoint.church. All right, we're gonna switch gears and head into the teaching portion of Junior High. 
We're heading into week three of our series today called Into the Unknown. Check it out. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. You're in space, you can't do that. One giant leap for mankind. Yo, most of us are afraid of something, right? Like maybe it's one of the really common ones, like a fear of snakes or insects. Maybe you have one of those more uncommon and even kind of random fears, like fear of feet or balloons or ducks. I don't know. <laughs> What's up guys, I'm Caleb, and we'll get into what I'm afraid of in just a second, but first, I asked some of my friends what scares them. Here's what they said. I get really freaked out when birds come too close to me and they don't seem afraid of me. That's when I am afraid of them. Ooh, heights, heights. However, I have been on skydive before, but I'm still scared of heights. I'm genuinely scared that that myth that if you pee in the pool, it's gonna change colors is really gonna come true for me one day. Being in an airplane when there's like turbulence, you know, when it starts to shake, I mean, come on, there's nowhere to go but down. <laughs> this is kind of weird, but I am scared of ants. Not just one ant, like the whole, like, when the ants just come all over and like, I think it, when I was little, I put my hand, my finger in an anvil and it just like went like all over my face. I am the most afraid of storms. Thunder, lightning, tornadoes, hurricanes, you will find me hiding under my bed. See what I mean? <laughs> we all have different things we're afraid of. Now, for me, the thing that scared scared me the most, it doesn't anymore, it's not real. It is real, it just doesn't exist in my life, was a rat, okay? So I'm living in Florida, life is peachy keen, and then my family moves to Pennsylvania. Not bad, just different, right? We move into this house and it hasn't been lived in for about a year or two, which means um, other things had taken residency there. And by things, I don't mean people, I mean rats, everywhere, they were, my, my little brother once woke up one time and he was like, oh, who's tickling my feet? It was a rat. So there was one night we're eating dinner, right? And, and we think we've taken care of our rat issue. We've, we've caught them all and they're, they're no longer living in our home. No, my little brother looks out in the room. He goes, what's that? We look over, this thing scurries across the floor. We're like, time out, what was that? Right? So my dad sets out this like big raccoon trap because it's about the size of a raccoon. And it like runs in and then the sides close and you like trap it just like that. And so my dad catches this thing on the last day of school and we're like, yeah, school's out, we got the rat, right? My dad holds this thing up by its tail. It was at least two feet long, probably three feet long. I almost just threw up. That, uh, that was gross. I never want to see it again. And I don't know about you, but sometimes dealing with the unknown, like a massive rat, <laughs> feels like a lot. And it feels like dealing with spiders or heights or roller coasters. It's just scary. And in other words, lots of change can be scary. Maybe you can totally relate to this feeling. Maybe like me, you felt fear when you've gone through a change in your life, like moving into a new house and having to relocate. Like maybe for you, it's your first day at a brand new school. Thinking about where you're gonna sit at, at lunch or if you're gonna be able to find your locker or what are other people gonna think of your first day of school outfit? That's a big deal. <laughs> and that can all be scary. Or maybe it's trying out for the school play for the first time. Will you learn all the lines? Will you get the part? Will you somehow embarrass yourself in the process? <laughs> Being in the play, yo, that would be fun, but trying out, that can be scary. Or having a new stepdad move into your house, wondering if he'll still be cool when he moves in. Or, or if you'll have to live in a new room because you have step siblings now. Or if the rules will change in your house now that he's there. Thinking about that kind of change can be scary. The list goes on and on and on, right? I mean, there's a, a new friend group, maybe the loss of a friendship that's meant a lot to you, your parents getting divorced, an older sibling moving out, your 
parent losing their job, a new small group, a new foster home placement, a, a starting position on the team, a sudden growth spurt, an illness in your family, a, a higher level class at school. Whew. When we look ahead and see changes like that coming our way, when we don't know what's waiting for us in the unknown, that can leave us feeling a whole lot of fear. Maybe we're afraid that things will never go back to the way they were before. Or we're afraid that changes we're facing will bring a lot of stress or frustration or sadness into our lives. Maybe we're afraid of the unknown. We don't know what things are going to be like when we experience the changes we're facing and that makes us afraid. Or maybe we're afraid that we'll have to handle it alone. Whew. That our friends, or our family, our group, and even God won't be there to help us deal with it. No matter what the changes and unknowns you're facing in your life are right now, chances are you feel at least a little nervous or afraid about what they might mean for you. Even the best kinds of changes can be intimidating or, or bring a little bit of fear. It's possible to be excited for something and a little scared at the same time. But what if I told you, time out, what if I told you there is a way to look ahead at the changes coming our way without as much fear? In fact, what if we could face going into the unknown with courage? I bet all of us would like to be people who choose courage when we go through changes, good or bad. Well, today, we're gonna look at something that happened to two guys thousands of years ago, like not exaggerating, literally thousands of years ago that helped them choose courage despite their fears. And I think, just maybe, it's gonna help us do the same. Okay, so the people we're talking about are known as the Israelites. They were God's chosen people, which is a pretty cool title if you ask me. Like imagine, like God's like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna put you in contact with my people and you're an Israelite and it's like, he's talking about me. <laughs> And when they were living a long, long time ago, God did something really cool for them. God led them down to Egypt to escape a terrible famine, which basically means all the food in their land had run out. Sounds like a good change, right? Well, sometime after they got there, the Egyptians enslaved the Israelites. And when that happened, they cried out to God for help. And God sent a man named Moses to lead the Israelites out of slavery. Moses was gonna lead God's people to an incredible new land of their very own a land they called the promised land. Out of slavery and to the promised land? Uh, again, that all sounds like good change to me. Nothing to fear there, right? Well, <laughs> when they arrived on the edge of the promised land, the Israelites got nervous. They got scared about what might lie ahead. So they sent 13 spies into the land to check things out. The spies went in and found that the land was absolutely beautiful. I mean, gorgeous. Why'd I say it like that? It was beautiful. <laughs> it was everything they dreamed it would be and more. But there was one small problem. There were people who looked like giants living there. And all of a sudden, this change wasn't looking so awesome. When the spies came back to report what they saw, here's what they said. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. The spies went on to tell all of Israel that there was no way they could live there. They, they were too afraid. Now, in a lot of ways, you really can't blame them. Giants, like, like giants are scary. Not the football team, actual giants are scary. And going to war against giants? <laughs> No, even scarier. And their fears are pretty understandable. And I think the same can be true for us. Yo, the fears we feel when looking ahead at the changes we might deal with are understandable. They're real. And there's nothing wrong with us for feeling that fear. The problem comes when we let the fear hold us back. When we stay frozen because we're afraid of what's ahead and the unknown. That's when we risk missing out on something that could turn out to be pretty awesome. That's what happened to the Israelites. They were too afraid to conquer the land that God had promised them. Well, all of the Israelites except two. Two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, <laughs> hey yo, <laughs> came back with a completely different view of things. Here's what they said. And they said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord. 
And do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Everyone said that they couldn't enter the promised land except for these two spies. So what was it about them that made their response so different? How was it that Joshua and Caleb, hey, yo, I gotta stop doing that, <laughs> were able to see the same giants that the others saw, but still have courage to go ahead? The answer is simple. They trusted what God said was true. They believed God's promise, and that belief gave them courage to move forward toward big change, even though they were scared. And honestly, they were probably terrified. But here's the thing about courage. Courage isn't about not being scared. It's about trusting and choosing to follow God, even though we're scared. That is what allows us to be confident when everything changes. For me, when I think about courage, sometimes I think about astronauts. Let me explain. <laughs> I may not be an astronaut, but I think it's probably safe to, look at this little guy. I think it's probably safe to assume that they're probably scared when they go on missions. I mean, there are so many unknowns and, and so many things to be nervous about when they get into space. But astronauts have something that they can trust when they venture into space. Their spacesuits. It protects them and keeps them safe from anything they might encounter. And, and the same is true for us. We might not have a huge white spacesuit to put on anytime we're scared of the unknown, but we have something else that's even better. We have God. Even though we may be scared about what may be in our future, we can trust that God is bigger than anything we could possibly encounter. We can be confident when everything changes because God is bigger than anything in the unknown. And like Joshua and Caleb knew that God was bigger than their fears, we can also trust God when we're scared of change and the unknown. So what does that look like for us today? How can we have courage when we're looking ahead to changes in our lives, big or small, that leave us feeling a little afraid? How can we remember that God is bigger than anything in the unknown? Well, first, I think we have to recognize what we're afraid of. When you look out at the unknowns in your life, what do you see that's causing you fear? Maybe your dad is getting remarried and that's left you afraid because it means your family will look different now. Maybe it's a fight with your best friend that you're afraid won't get worked out. Maybe it's starting a new school that has you afraid you'll be alone. Whatever it is, name it. Acknowledge what it is that you're afraid of. Then try to do what Joshua and Caleb did. Focus on God. When you think about what changes you're afraid of, remember that God is with you and always working for your good. God is bigger than anything in the unknown. Uh, let me share an idea that might help. Whatever you focus on will grow bigger and bigger in your mind. If you focus on what you're afraid of, how worried you are, or all of the what ifs that might happen, your fear will grow bigger and bigger in your mind. So instead, focus on God. Focus on who God is, how, how powerful God is, how, how God is in control of everything. Focus on the fact that God is with you and in you and is with you every step of the way. Focus on the truth that God is bigger than anything you face. Focus on the truth that God is working for your good in every situation. As you focus on God, you'll find that your fear is smaller than God is, which it always was. <laughs>
whatever we focus on tends to grow bigger and bigger in our minds. And so when we focus on change that's scary and unknown, it becomes more and more frightening the more we think about it. This is just part of how humans think and process. And so that's why it's important to think less about the potentially scary change you're facing and think more about God, who's bigger than the change we're dealing with. We can give less focus to what's changing around us and more focus on God who can help us handle it. This is called cognitive restructuring, but it's just a fancy word for, for something that means shifting your focus. So how in the world do we do that? Because it doesn't sound that easy to do. Well, we can start by recognizing what we're afraid of and just acknowledge it. And you can acknowledge it by writing it down drawing it, telling your parents, telling a trusted friend, or telling a small group leader. Then, once you've recognized it and acknowledged what you're afraid of, you can start to focus on God by remembering that He's with us and is always working out, uh, is always working for our good. Remember, God is bigger than the unknown. It kind of reminds me of a VeggieTales song called God is Bigger Than the Boogeyman. And I won't sing it for you, but one of the lines in the chorus goes, God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla and the monsters on TV. It's kind of a cheesy song, but it's so true. Remember, God is bigger than the unknown, especially when it comes to change. Thanks for participating today, everyone. I hope you spent some time today as a family and had some great discussion. Now, before you go, remember to post a photo of your family participating today in our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group, and you can be the proud winner of a Tim Hortons gift card. Now to close our time this morning, take the next two minutes to pray together as a family, and then head to the Lake Point app to access our weekday devotionals that go along with our series. You'll find them in the family resources section. You can also find the link in the video description right below. Have a wonderful week, friends. We'll see you next time.